Okay. See you guys. Hope everyone's having a great day. And uh, I'm going to let Adam and Drew take it from here. Uh, and uh, go ahead, Adam. Thank you, Damien. Appreciate it. What's up, everybody? This is episode two of Pitch the World. This is a Facebook Live broadcast featuring myself. My name is Adam Kemper with uh, my co-host, Andrew Rosso. I'm coming in from Boca Raton, Florida, and Andrew's coming in in Chile, uh, Ohio. So uh, we're, we're so thrilled to have the founder of uh, Pitch Investors Live, the, uh, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Matthew Lawley. He's joining us today. Hey, guys. So, um, we're, uh, we're certainly going to talk about Pitch Investors Live. Uh, you can't go one episode without talking about it. Uh, want, to, want to encourage our audience to, um, to check out our first episode. We, we had Kevin Harrington, the original shark from Shark Tank, and uh, he joined us and gave some tr uh, incredible insights uh, for, for entrepreneurs and, and business people alike. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to check that out, I encourage you to do so. Um, but uh, without further ado, I want to get to uh, I want to get to Matthew. Uh, now, Matthew, he's a he's an entrepreneur. Uh, he can tell you a little bit about himself, but uh, he's the founder and creator of Two Up Technology Incorporated. And before it was Pitch Investors Live, it was another app where you could essentially engage in a debate uh, with somebody else over politics or something of that nature. And uh, he was creative enough to utilize the technology uh, for Pitch Investors Live. So, Matthew, uh, welcome to Pitch the World. Can you just tell us a little bit about your background? Hey, guys. Well, thanks very much for having me on. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay, I came to the U.S. when I was about uh, 22, right after finishing university. I did a degree in chemistry and then uh, came over and, work, and worked for a pharmaceuticals um, company in Hollywood, Florida, which is very different than Hollywood, California. <laughs> but, uh, so I, so I, uh, I worked there for about a year. Then I went back, got did some uh, visa stuff and came over and I got sponsored to get my green card and uh, spent about seven years in total in pharmaceuticals. And um, yeah, I was just itching to get into the into the technology world and I was you know doing a lot of reading about it, studying and, um, you know, starting projects and kind of going, mm, maybe that's not the one and that sort of thing. And then um, at some point near the end of that seven year period, I, I realized I had something interesting. I was I started working with um, QR codes and mobile phones and things like that. Actually, what I was trying to do, which was, it was obviously in the wrong time, but I was trying to build um, a layer of augmented reality using QR codes. The idea would be that QR codes would trigger things to happen in an augmented reality. So I, I created, I, I wrote a, a patent around some something I came up with and uh, I started a company to exploit that and we tried lots of different lots of different angles at that and um, eventually pivoted to, um, to mobile phone marketing generally because mobile phones existed and augmented reality headsets did not exist. So that was the uh, that was the thing that pushed me in that direction. So um, yeah, uh, we had we had some pretty good success. We got um, uh, some some big clients, and uh, we I think I think we're kind of we're we're if not the first, we're one of the first companies to introduce QR codes to the U.S. So Very I mean cool. they're, they're in heavy use now, but I mean back then I mean people just didn't have a clue what it was. So we had a um, we actually had a QR code on the window of the flagship store of Ralph Lauren in New York City, so it's kind of it's kind of exciting. You know, you can throw them you can throw them on almost anything these days, can't you? You can, you can. So, uh, so um, managed to sell that company um, in 2009, and uh, since then I've just worked on various things that interest me. Just lots of different projects. I'm involved with a. Uh, a uh, helicopter startup called uh, Avalux, which um, which does point-to-point -point transportation using helicopters. And um, uh, but now I'm, my focus is is entirely on Pitch Investors Live. You already told the story about how Pitch Investors Live came to be. 
uh, I like arguing with people, or I used to like arguing with people, so I created an app to argue. There you go. Then I realized uh, nobody will to argue. Nah, we'll get into that in a couple minutes, but uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that that tune into uh, Pitch Investors Live, and I imagine tune into Pitch the World as well. Hmm. Um, can you can you tell us about your transition from? being employee to employer and sort of go, going out on your own and doing your own thing? Well, you know, what I did was not what I would consider good. Uh, <laughs> like, so I kind of just got really, I just really, I got so, I got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. And I just, I just, uh, you know, saved up some saved up some cash and um, and started working a little bit on the side. But I probably jumped way too soon, to be honest. Um, and and I spent a good year not really knowing what I was doing at all. So uh, my transition my transition was kind Just of like one year. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I know, but it was like it was a uh, it was a good year of like really doing stuff that ended up completely unrelated to what we ended up doing with that business. Um, but you know, I was just trying stuff, you know, and um, and it was it was scary, you know. You got one year until you're living, you're either living under a bridge or you're going back to live with your parents right. at uh, like 28, which is kind of you know a bit difficult. So, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, there, there's probably no right way to do it, though, right? The best way is just to jump if you want to do it. And, you know, many entrepreneurs, when starting yeah. off, Matt, you know, many don't yeah. always go straight to success. A lot of them do have that struggle story. A lot of them do have that, you know, sometimes I do have to live check to check or live with mom and dad for a little bit. You know, nobody ever hears that stuff. So it, it's good to hear that, you know. But we're, we're glad that you are where you are today. Well, I mean, you know. Everybody tells the story, and it's always the highlights, right? It's always the highlights. It's always either the highlights or the uh, you include the lows to add drama to make it seem like the highlights are even more <laughs> impressive. But you only really want to tell people the highlights. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty normal, I think, to bounce around and not know what you're doing. Although some people do, I, I definitely get the impression that some people know what they're doing before they start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. So. You know, in terms of your entrepreneurial growth along the way, I, you know, I imagine you've hit some pain points and, you know, you utilize some of those pain points or challenges as part of your your creation of Pitch Investors Live. Can you kind of just uh, take us through those moments in your career? Yeah, um, sure. I mean, one of the I mean, in terms of ego and stuff, one of the biggest blows is is realizing that, you know, you're not meant to be you're not meant to be the most important and you're not supposed to do everything. You know, I don't know if that's, that's a, maybe it's just me that experiences that, but I definitely, you know, um, entrusting other people, um, is a very important thing and learning to do it sometimes can be kind of difficult, but, um, but yeah, one of the, one of the, I mean, the real reason that pitch investors live exists is because, um, I at no point have lived in, in Silicon Valley or New York city. So I have done things where I've, traveled to New York City and Silicon Valley to talk to investors, to, uh, you know, work with teammates and things like that. And so I've been part of those scenes, but not so much. And I find that, I mean, it's very difficult to, to raise capital or even get people involved in startups outside of the places where everyone wants to be in a startup. You know, in, in, in uh, San Francisco, it, it feels, and it's just me, but it feels like, um, everybody wants to be in a startup. And mm -hmm. when you're in a startup, you're kind of like a rock star, especially if you're the founder of the startup and you're just living on noodles. You're a rock star. <laughs> it's really weird, but it's not like that elsewhere. And I've been in the US where it's probably easier than in a lot of other places. You know? right. I mean, the, another word for startup founder is unemployed, right? So, so it's difficult. It's difficult to... Um, uh, I think I think uh, my experience was that it was difficult to um, to make the connections needed to make startups work from outside those areas. So I kind of want to just fix that problem. I mean, if it 
if it used to take uh, traveling out to one of these places to meet people, uh, you know, spending some time networking, uh, you know, by time I mean possibly months or, or years or whatever, introducing yourself to the scene just to speak with people, I want to reduce that down to, you know, minutes, seconds. That would be nice. I'm not saying we always, you know, succeed in that, but, you know, that's the goal. You know, and I, I think it's it's unique. And as we said in the first episode, you know, it seems so common sense, but yet nobody has done it or thought of doing it until now. And I think what you guys have done, what you have done, is really open up a space that many people were scared to open themselves. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I mean, you have, you, you do have like angel list and, um, and, Gust and um, things like that, you know, services like that, where they they do try to introduce entrepreneurs to investors and and to a, a wider network, uh, but it's not that instant. It kind of seems to take a while, you know. I think a, a quick introduction and a chat would be quicker. So that's kind of the angle we went with. But um, I, I'm really not sure why uh, why there was never a video face to face instant thing, you know. I, it's it's bizarre actually now i think about it that's you know, not thinking you know even, even starting this up i mean did you have you know a mentor or somebody to guide you because especially with startups you know whether you have the experience or not not you personally but whether you know a young entrepreneur has the experience or not it is important i think and i think many of us can agree to have a mentor did did you yourself have one during this process um, well when I when I was just starting off, my um, you know I, I really had no idea what I was doing, and I, I so what I did was I reached out to the only people I really knew who did possibly know what they were doing, and uh, two of them were my my um, my uncles Rob and Dave, and uh, you know I'm eternally grateful to them for giving me advice. You know they they were never involved in um, in the same kind of businesses that I've been involved in, but they've, you know, they've done things in the business world in, in different ways. And so they were, it was nice to have someone that you, you know, you trust because they're your family and, you know, they're, they'll just, I mean, they may not know the answer, but at least they're able to sort of say, uh, you know, that doesn't look like a good idea to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people around you like that. Yeah. No people as opposed to all yes people. I mean, I think that's critical for uh, when you create your team. And I, I sort of want to dive into that at some point too. just, you know, sort of some of the things that you look for um, in terms of building a team, building a partnership, um, you know, the types of people you look for to work with you. I think for me, the, the goal when I start one of these um, projects or any project really is to is I have something in mind that I want to create you know and sometimes it's not even very clear what that is you know and um, I, I tend to get absorbed in creating what I can create first and um, but there's another part of, of creating anything which is involving other people who can help you with that and uh, that for me, that means bringing on people who are who are good at and who enjoy doing the stuff that you hate and are not good at. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, really, that's that's what I look for. It's just you know, um, just meet people who are, can get excited about about um, the general direction that, that we're going and who um, who like doing the things that I don't like and who are good at it. Or, or even maybe they're not already good at it, but they just would like to become good at it and seem capable of becoming good at it. So, sure. like, uh, like one of the things we've um, we've done at Pitch Investors Live is we've been involved in um, you know, token related uh, things, and so you know we've we've nobody nobody knew how to do that right. No, there was no right way to do it, but I think we did it the right way. And, uh, well, you know, everybody, you know, you start to play off one another. You all learn. Yeah from one another, you figure out what each other's strengths are, you figure out what each other's weaknesses are. And I think mm. a lot of ways you going back to the mentorship thing is you each have your own way of mentoring the other. And I guess to, to follow up with that is how do you yourself define what a mentor is? Is there something 
specific you look for when you went to your uncles you know yes business experience but what how do you define a mentor um i guess i've i've never really gone after someone looking for like a mentor specifically i just uh, the way I, my my mental process is something like um you know i either i need help with this particular thing and i admire what this this person is able to do with that particular thing uh, like how my uncles had had, um, I admired their abilities in uh, in business and so on. For example, um, so I guess it's admiration, right? It's like someone you admire, someone you you kind of wish you had some of the qualities of, and you um, you get yourself around them as much as possible. You know, sure. so that's how I define it. It's just you know be around people you admire and um, and who you feel are better than you at, at some particular thing that you want to be good at. Right. We, uh, we had a question from somebody in the audience and we, oh. we definitely encourage those because uh, there's, uh, you know, this is the opportunity to get to, to, get to speak to the founder, uh, Matthew Lawley. So the question's coming in from Anastasia Green and yeah. it's, what is your biggest challenge of the early stage startup? Um, you know, some challenges that you've experienced and what has been your biggest one? Um, there, there are quite a few and I think funding is one, but I guess the one I'll pick on is, um, is building momentum, right? Building momentum in the team. Um, and, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, the co-founder, Jonathan Foltz, for really, like, he, he's been a big a big part of, of building the momentum within this team, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's one of the, the biggest challenges. It's like getting, you know, a lot of people excited about, about what we're trying to do and getting people aligned, getting people moving together. So credit, credit to him on, on a lot of that stuff. You know, I've done my part, but I maybe the credit where it's due. <laughs> Building momentum. Well, that, that's, that's, key. that's key. That's um, key. I mean, can, can you take us through, you know, I guess what you've experienced when you've had that momentum? You know, what type of positive results you've seen through, you know, through a positive momentum stage? Like, how do you know when, when you're in it, you mean? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Things just start happening. For It's, it's kind of weird and otherworldly. You know, you're not... It's not, not so much like a, um, you're not taking steps to be in momentum, just things are flowing and uh, things are happening. People seem to just connect, it's really weird. Sorry. Well, you know, it's one of those things, when you're not really looking for it, it kind of comes your way. You're, you're mm -hmm. focusing in the business, but at the same time, you're not focusing on certain things and it, you know, yeah. just can happen. I, I think that's the best way to kind of elaborate on that. Yeah, another way of describing it would be that you know, there's nothing, there's no like, um, there's no thoughts in between you and what you're doing. It's just like you're there in the video game just doing stuff quickly, you know. Uh, I, I think something like that. You're just connected, connected to it and things just happen. And when they happen, you're just like, awesome, let's do that. Or like if something bad happens, you're like, oh, let's walk around that thing, you know. So, you know, and I think... You know, with, with such a good idea like this, you know, Adam is a practicing attorney. I myself am a practicing yeah. attorney. And maybe this is something Adam can, can touch on. But with such a great idea, I mean, you have to guard yourself, don't you, Adam? You know, you have to guard your idea and protect it. Yeah, I mean, it, well, I, I think what uh, what Andrew's getting to is, I mean, Pitch Investors Live is, is live. It's out in the public. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a public forum where an entrepreneur is sharing his or her ideas. Yeah, so yeah. in terms of guarding your property, I know one of the questions I get all the time about Pitch Investors Live, Matt, I'm sure you get it as well, and I'd love to hear your take, is you know, what can we do to protect our idea from getting stolen? Because once mm. it's out in the public, then anybody can take it, right? Yeah. Uh so I, I think it was Paul Graham from Y Combinator, but I could be wrongly attributing this. He was saying that, that entrepreneurs should never be afraid of, of um, exposing their idea for the simple reason that um, most people who hear it are going to be inclined to help or not be bothered with it. 
right? They're not going to, most people's inclination is not to, you know, like some sort of scavenger uh, or, or some sort of predator attack, attack you and steal your idea and do it behind your back. It doesn't, I think most people are not tending to work like that. But just because, you know, you might, you might tend towards an open approach uh, where you're trying to enroll as many people in, in helping you with your vision as possible doesn't mean that you shouldn't take the precautions on the other side. You know, you don't have to only be like, okay, I trust the world. Everything's going to be fine. No, you gotta, you gotta take precautions too. So, um, you know, you don't have, you could do, you could do both at once. You could protect your idea as you're exposing it to the world. And, um, you know, the, the way, the way my experience with things like patents and so on is that, um, you know, they take a little while, um, but it's it's kind of like there are certain when you when you submit them, you kind of have a clock starting, and everything doesn't need to be finally resolved before you um, yeah, before you have some sort of uh, protection. Well, I'll, I'll uh, but, but generally, just to, just to yeah. generally comment, I just generally think that you know people worry way way too much about that stuff instead of just getting the idea out there. Well, I'll just I know quick, uh, Matt. Um, you know, you made some tremendous points about, you know, safeguards on the front end, uh, but also, you know, being cognizant of, of people utilizing your idea. I mean, I, I think we hear it all the time. The second you get copied, that means you've sort of made it, uh, that, you know, you have proof of concept yeah. and, you know, you have your idea out there. And, and then if you start seeing traction and other people using it, that means you've probably done something right. Um, so I think it's actually a good thing. Um, yeah, and but the key is to get with the lawyers uh, to, to make mm -hmm. sure that you have the appropriate intellectual property protection so mm -hmm. that if someone out there is copying you too, too much and it becomes a problem to where it's uh, confusing the public or interfering with your business, then, you know, then you can have the opportunity to take action. Yeah. But you also have to understand that we're, you know, we're in a digital age and not every attorney is as understanding or adopting of this new technology as many of us are. You know, Adam, you're, you're fluent with this. I myself am, am fluent with this, but not every attorney understands social media. Not every attorney knows, you know, what Facebook Live is or, you know, Instagram yeah. TV. So, you know, it, it is up to us to, you know, protect our patent, protect our trademarks as, as if it were a child, because you got to nurture it and make sure that you do find the right attorney that has a somewhat decent understanding of the digital age that we're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also who, who's um, wh who's going to watch your back, right? Like, oh, well, like, so, so that you can go out and be open and tell the world, hey, I got this great idea. Da, 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 da. Meanwhile, you've got you know an Adam or Drew, uh, you know, getting ready. Craigslist <laughs> attack, waiting to drop a hit on you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so along, so the same, along the same lines, Matt, you know, yeah. can, can you just talk about how valuable and important it is to have a legal team you oh, know, yeah. when you when you're starting up a business, um, when, when you're getting into the business to just mm -hmm. help you with uh, with protections to stay in compliance, uh, maybe mm -hmm. to help you with your pitch on, on the Pitch Investors Live platform, too. Yeah. Well, you've done some of that, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> It's great. It's great. It's not, you know, it's like I said earlier, you know, there are some things that, you know, you want to bring on people who are way better than you at, at certain things, especially the things you don't want to do that, that will take care of those things. But sometimes are complicated and law is one of those things that I am no expert in. And I don't really, you know, I don't, it's not one of the things that I, I push myself every day to become an expert in. What I do is I, I trust people who are experts in that, you know, so I've worked with Adam and Rose and, uh, and uh, Drew. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's just important to have people around you trust in anything, but legal, uh, in, in terms of legal, you know, um, when you're involved in technology, often you rub against, um, legal unknowns, right. And, um, you've got to understand those things. Um, if you're if you're really a disruptive startup, I would say it's almost guaranteed that you're going to run up against something unknown. Like uh, just thinking of some examples. I mean, uh, Facebook. You see, everyone's seen Mark Zuckerberg being um, 
you know, having information extracted and you know, <laughs> a sip of water while not blinking and so on. And, uh, and then you've got Uber, you know, running into, into um, the crosshairs of cities all around the world, you know, they're banning Uber and so on. These things will always arise whenever you have a startup, so it's great to have smart legal minds around you who, who will just keep an eye out for you, you know? Well, especially when it comes to people's information and data, you know, with GDPR out in Europe and, you know, the U.S. trying to finally get on board and say, you know, what, maybe we should start taking a little bit more uh, care and concern towards uh, our own, you know, personal information. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah, well, privacy is very important and something that uh, it's kind of with most, at least with consumer apps and things like that, people tend not to, I think they just enjoy the experience so much they forget that they're sharing everything about themselves it's like the, the question when you log into a bank is like what was your first pet and then you just made a post about what your first pet was that yep. sort of thing. so so uh it's, it's definitely good that some, some <laughs> control <laughs> absolutely and, you know with with pitch you know there's a lot more to the pitch program we have pitch investors live you guys have an ambassadors program where you actually encourage you know a lot of the public to have the ability to be part of the team and to, to become their own entrepreneurs and try and sell the vision that, that you guys, you know, just ab you know, just so passionately advocate for what, what can you tell us about the ambassador program, about this accelerator program that, that you guys have? Mm, you know, okay. The, the ambassador program is, um, I mean, everybody knows an entrepreneur who could do with some more people in the network and um, ideally investors, right? Everybody, everybody knows somebody who's in that position. So, um, you know, we're using the power of, you know, connectedness to, to uh, benefit us and also benefit the people who are interested in, in bringing people on. So, we, the ambassador program is structured to, um, you know, give really good payouts to people who bring people onto the platform. And, and you know, we, we hope also that people who come onto the platform have a great experience too. Um, and then, uh, what, sorry, what was the other question? The ambassador program. The accelerator. Accelerator. The accelerator program, yeah. So the accelerator program is a, um, basically it's, it's like a social, it's, it's, you're in basically a class, you're in a class of, uh, of people. There's, uh, there's going to be a limited number of people that are brought into this. And the idea is just education. We just want to make sure that we get great mentors in there and, um, and, who, who can you know teach startup entrepreneurs who may never have been involved in any kind of business before all about things like legal running a business technology all sorts of stuff you know I'll be poking my head in there to give some uh, some some tips here and there and uh, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure some of you guys will be and um, so we're just trying to expose people to you know, maybe maybe some of the people who you um, you come across as mentors in the platform are not Doing something that helps you, but I would hope that a lot of the a lot of the people who come in um, will be you know people that you admire and people you want to learn from. You know, and for some of the viewers that may be watching here, you know how how can they get involved? How how could they make themselves known or express their interest in, in potentially joining this accelerator program? Because education for this, I think, is is essential to, to understanding how powerful this platform is and can be uh, as as the weeks and months and and, and years go by. Uh, go to our, um, go to our either our Facebook page or our website, and uh, just you know, there's, there's link, links to the accelerator program and things like that. And um, also, if you post on our on any of our social media stuff, you get a very quick response. Someone will help you get on board. It's very very easy. Awesome. We have a great team. They're very friendly, and and uh, everybody's excited to uh, to help people learn about how to make a business work. So I, I think we have just a couple more questions from the audience, and um, I know we want to wrap up with our, you know, what what do you do outside of business, hobby, movies, books question as well. Um, so, uh, you know, let, let's get to uh, let's get to a couple of these audience questions, uh, Damien. If you want to pop one up, um, yeah. So one of the questions comes in from Tim Pryor. It mm -hmm. says, "How's the crypto side of pit, of the pitch platform coming along?" Well, uh, for those who don't know, we have a token that's um, it's listed on HitBTC and it's on some other uh, decentralized exchanges and so on. And you know, if if you're if the question is about the the price, I mean, we all know what's happening with uh, crypto token prices at the moment. So, <laughs> uh, 
and, and we don't really have any control of that. So, uh, you know, we just kind of you know, w- watch as the market does what it does, you know. Uh, but, okay, so in terms of the actual technology that's being implemented, we're really, really doing well. We've got, um, uh, we have a development site on which uh, it's possible to uh, swap tokens and uh, do a number of other things using using contracts that run on Ethereum. And uh, it's not live on mainnet yet, but I'm, I'm hoping it should be pretty soon. Um, like I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking a matter of a couple of weeks, uh, we should have something on mainnet. Although it's possible that we push those back because uh, we've got to uh, do some, some legal work and so on to make sure that we stay um, but I mean, we're still pushing ahead with with all that stuff, and just because the um, you know what's going on in the cryptocurrency uh, market is happening, it doesn't mean we stop that. It's, it's actually one of the things that interests me most. Actually, I'm super into the crypto stuff. As a matter of fact, uh, next week I'm going out to um, ETHCC to meet with some uh, pretty big. I mean, uh, I'm just going to network with some pretty big players in the, the Ethereum community. And uh, so I stay active in that, and I, I try to understand what's going on in that, and I'm I'm implementing stuff. So you know, kind of like us lawyers, you have your own continuing education. You know, we have our yeah. CLEs are continuing legal. This is like a continuing crypto education, nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> I like to always half know what I'm doing. There you go. There you go. By Matt Lally. No, <laughs> I, like, I like to stay on the on the <laughs> edge of that. That's the better way of saying. It. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, I think we had one more question and uh, we'll, we'll close out shortly. Um, the question comes in from Heather Page. Uh, what, what kept your passion alive during your early stages of entrepreneurship? I think it was just a, there were two, there were two forces. And one, one don't was, drugs, don't say drugs. No, yeah, no drugs. <laughs> there, were, there were two forces and, uh, one was, you know, a real desire to, to see, see what I was working on, um, created. I like to see the things that I dream up created. That's, that's a big force for me. The other side was, you know, fear, like fear of, well, failing and fear of, like I mentioned, like living under a bridge or, or on my mom's sofa, you know, <laughs> it was like those two, those two things, they both push you in the right direction. And the realistic fears, you know, these are things that everybody, you know, I'm sure all of us have, have had uh, at, at some point and may still have. So, you know. yeah, in terms of the expectation side, though, I'd say like a lot, a lot of the time it's, um, it's actually not the realistic, um, it's it's realism isn't the goal on the side of um, of where you're trying to go. I think a big vision is like a vision that's realistic. Sometimes isn't as as uh, motivating as like an extremely big vision that like only an insane person would have. <laughs> like like Elon Musk trying to go to Mars. It's like that guy's motivated. He, does he ever stop working? Yeah. You know, that might also be the, uh, the, the hashish. <laughs> you never know. But yes, you know, it's 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 good to have figures like that that really set their own standard, not a universal standard, but a standard uh, to kind of you know abide by or follow. Yes, that's yes, absolutely so. right. All right, Matt. Let's talk about what you what you do outside the business. What okay. you sure. are you a movie buff? Are you a video game nerd? Do you are you an <laughs> avid reader? What what do you do? Um, I do a, a few things. Uh, I like very much to nerd out on crypto. I love, I love, which is not, it's not really outside the businesses, but I do do a lot of research that's not really related to what we're doing. So I, I just enjoy that. Um, I, I play a Brazilian martial art called capoeira, which is really weird. If anyone's never, never heard of it, then just go to YouTube and search for capoeira. And, uh, <laughs> Are you the yes. headliner of the promo video? Sorry, what was that? Are you the promo video for it? Are you advertising the, the program? I mean, I'm not a good example of it, but I do enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I train uh, in that when I can, and I, I go play that and things like that. It's, um, 
it's fun. I, I like martial arts of all kinds. I actually at one point had an MMA fight scheduled, and uh, I was kind of lucky. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe my opponent to be is actually watching this video. I don't know. Um, <laughs> He, he had an MMA fight a month before the fight that was scheduled with me, and he, he punched a guy in the head and broke his hand, and his hand swelled up like, like Hulk's fist, and he had to drop out of my fight, which was great for me. Because hey, it went to win. It went to win. You know, and I, I think kind of ending the, or transitioning this, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Adam, is, you know, it seems like it's very important to have a balanced life. You know, as busy as you are, or as an Elon Musk or a Mark Zuckerberg, is you got to balance your life. You have to balance and understand that there's more to life than just the work, 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 and you have to be happy. And I think, you know, doing what you enjoy, whether it's, you know, martial arts or, you know, uh, nerding out with crypto, even though it's not really related to the business, it gives you a peace of mind, does it not? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Although it's fine, I think it's also fine to um, to go through periods where you're like hyper focused and you're just, you know, totally driven. But ultimately, you know, you have to um, take time for yourself. I think that's one of the interesting things. Anyone who follows Grant Cardone, um, you know, he's always talked about never taking vacations and stuff, and it seems seems like now he's all about taking vacations. I think that's <laughs> that's cool. He deserves it, and. Uh, you know, you've got to you got to get a reward at the end of it, or during it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. No, Who knows where good. Matt's accent comes from? Come on, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm from the north of the UK, born in Liverpool, and I grew up in North Wales. Are you Very teaching cool. classes for a Rosetta Stone by any chance? <laughs> am I what practicing with Rosetta? Stone? No, I, I never used that software, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> All right, Adam. Well, th thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again very soon and uh, real excited to see what you guys do with uh, the Pitch Investors Live app and uh, all the upcoming features, the Accelerator program, the Brand Ambassador program. Uh, just really a lot of good stuff going on at Pitch Investors Live. So thank you so much, Matthew. We really appreciate it's it. Fun. Well, thanks, guys. Um, it's a pleasure talking to you to you guys and you guys deserve some credit to it so it's really you deserve a lot of credit so well thank you for your time keep keep uh dreaming up the magic and uh <laughs> hopefully we can keep sharing what what what's to come well, all right go. awesome <laughs> we'll see you guys we'll see you guys next time for episode three on pitch the world this is adam kemper it's andrew rosso thank you matthew thanks, thanks a lot. thank you guys Bye.